Negative dysphotopsia is a side effect of modern day IOS surgery that has a unique place in the list of ocular diseases because it affects those eyes which have been subjected to a well executed cataract surgery rather than a botched up procedure. Approximately 15% uncomplicated pseudophagus have symptoms of negative dysphotopsia. While the symptoms diminish to dismissible levels, in most patients, up to 3% continue to suffer hopelessly. In United States alone, 600,000 unhappy pseudophagus are adding every year. While working on human eye models in ZMAX Optical Designing Studio, we constructed an experiment to analyze the behavior of temporal peripheral rays incident in the nasal posterior chamber. We concluded that the refraction of light rays inward from the nasal IOL edge was leaving behind a dark shadow in the nasal retinal periphery. This corroborated with the currently published work. We devised a novel idea of redistributing light rays to illuminate the nasal retina more evenly and eliminate the shadow using a sulcus placed ring shaped implant. After regulatory approvals, the prototype was tested. The procedure for implantation begins with making a side port entry with MVR blade followed by optional injection of preservative free intracameral lignocaine. The 2.2 mm phaco emulsification incision is then reopened or a new wound may be constructed. The AC is filled with dispersive OVD or 2% HPMC. This is done while directing the cannula to a plane under the iris in order to open the access to the ciliary sulcus 360 degree. Slight underfill is desirable. To load the ND ring, the sterile package is opened and the disposable cartridge is held with its wings wide open in the non-dominant hand. The inner surface of the cartridge is lined with OVD. The negative dysphotopsia ring which comes in a fluid bath is held with McPherson forceps and placed in the loading area. The ring is folded upon itself like a taco and is placed in the gutter. The wings of the cartridge are then shut closed. Smooth advancement of the device is confirmed after loading the cartridge onto the disposable injector before injecting into the AC. After injection into the AC, the ring is allowed to unfold. Most often, one half of the ring unfolds earlier and aligns with the plane of the sulcus. A Sinsky hook is now used to hook the ring shaped haptics or the haptic optic junctions of the device and dial it into position. The other half of the ring continues to unfold and similar maneuvers to direct the haptics into the sulcus are applied on the other side as well. Once all four haptics are apparently in sulcus, it is important to ensure that the iris is free from any entanglement with the device. The Sinsky hook is used to nudge each haptic of the broad haptic ring junction and pull it back towards the center slightly. The haptics immediately recoil back to the desired position, releasing any entangled iris tissue. Intracameral pilocarpine may be injected at the end of surgery, optionally to ensure a free iris and a circular pupil. Coaxial irrigation and aspiration is then used to wash the AC thoroughly. After this, the wounds are hydrated to achieve a watertight closure and intracameral moxifloxacin may be injected. Watertight seal is confirmed at the end of procedure. All patients reported resolution of symptoms on the very first post-operative day. The eye was quiet with no significant inflammatory reaction and the ring appeared to cover the peripheral anterior capsule 360 degree. A temporal peripheral slit beam 
when passes through the undilated pupil is incident on the ring. Anterior segment OCT shows that the ring which has a thickness of 250 micron sits comfortably on the anterior capsule, leaving some space between the iris and the ring. In a pilot study that included 13 eyes in therapeutic group and 6 eyes in the prophylactic group, this device was found 100% effective. It is safe and easy to implant. The efficacy of this device is rooted in addressing both the major contributory factors of negative dysphotopsia simultaneously. The edges of the ring redistribute the temporal peripheral rays evenly in the nasal retinal periphery and the ring sits on the anterior capsular remnant, blocking rays at high incidence angles from falling on the capsule. Thus, this device shows promise as a feasible solution instead of the tricks and trials currently in practice for managing negative dysphotopsia.